Okay, now as we all know, the end of financial year is fast approaching and soon by 14th of July 2012, all the employees will need to issue payment summaries or group certificates to their employees. Now, rather than filling those old paper forms which are sent by the ATO each year, it's better if you actually do it electronically and you can send an electronic copy of it to the ATO as well on a disk or a USB. Now, as we all know, Myob is the most widely used accounting software in Australia by the small business owners. So I'll show you today how to create group certificates in Myob. Now we go into the payroll command, click on print payment summaries. We go next. Now, uh, in, in this window, you will confirm the company details. So make sure the company name, trading name, address is correct. The contact details. It could be your contact details, your bookkeepers or tax agents contact details. Basically the contact details of the person who can provide answers or explanation to ATO if they are having any issues with the payment summaries. Now before I actually go into this field I would want to mention that before you actually start creating payment summaries make sure you have all the right details in your employee card file such as the right address, the suburb, the postcode, the date of votes and the TFNs because if you are missing any of those fields in the employee card details in the next after the next few windows the pop-ups will keep on coming until all that information is properly filled in so it's better to have that information right beforehand. Now in this window we actually link the payroll categories to the payment summary fields so we'll start with the gross payments. I'll just untake all of these. Okay, so gross payments would include any payments that are actually included in the gross wages or the gross salary for your employees. That could include advances. So what you do is you highlight the actual summary field and then you tick all the categories in here which are actually included in this field. So the gross payments that could be advances, back pay, hourly or salary, any bonuses or commissions, holiday leave, overtime, sick pay, so all of these could be included in your gross payments. Next one is the allowances. With their allowances, employees could give different allowances to their, um, sorry, employees can give different allowances to their employees such as a motor vehicle allowance or a phone allowance or a, a, if they're using any of the tools or equipment on side you, you might probably give them a tools allowances or a first aid allowance if someone's using their own first aid kit. So what you do is you actually highlight this field then you actually you can put the description in the description category here so you can name it motor vehicle or you can name it cars depending on the type of allowance it is. Once you've put the description here you actually tick the relevant allowance category so this motor vehicle that will be the travel allowances if you've had any more allowances you can just name it accordingly and tick the relevant categories. After that we go to the deductions. Now the most important deduction which you would want to put is the salary sacrifice. So deduction 3 you can put the salary sacrifice in here and then you can link the salary sacrifice superannuation to the deductions and if they are having giving any other deductions like a union fee, you can actually link union fees to the deduction here so that's the union fee then if there are any other deductions like a Centrelink payment that you're deducting you can provide a description and link the relevant account in there the final one is the total tax withheld which is actually the PAYG withholding which that you are take withholding from the gross income each week, fortnight or month depending on your payroll cycle. So the total tax withheld will be the PAYG withholding so that needs to be ticked. ticked. Then you go on to the next okay, a description. Sorry I actually didn't fill in the description. So we fill in the description. So what happened is so if you haven't put any description but you've actually ticked a relevant category for that particular field it won't let you go next until unless you've put in a description in there. So then you go next this is the one where you link superannuation categories as in the salary sacrifice because as all of you are aware that nowadays it's mandatory to report the salary sacrifice on the group certificates. So what you do is you actually click on the link superannuation categories. 
right now here i've only got one superannuation category because i don't have any salary sacrifice set up in my my file but if you would have had a salary sacrifice it would have different categories here so the next one would say salary sacrifice then you can tick that particular category and link it here so if nothing's linked it'll come up zero or if you haven't linked, linked anything you can actually type in the figures here manually if you need to but we are actually not doing that because I don't know what the salary sacrifice were. These are just the dummy figures anyway. Then in the next, this is the reportable French benefits amount. So if you've provided any French, if any employees earned any French benefits during the French benefit year, you actually put the gross pay amounts in here without the decimals. Next. Now with the next, this will actually, what you do is you actually tick the employees whose payment summaries you want. And the, this has got the relevant text file numbers next to it so what you can do is you can either print the payment summaries directly onto your printer or you can save the payment summaries i obviously like to save them first and then print them so what you do is you go save payment summaries it'll come up with a another pop-up window which will ask your location where you want to save them now i've i'm just using this one so it's already named the file and it won't let me change it and it'll always save it as a pdf so you click save like this and it'll save the payment summaries for you because in my my file there's only one employee that actually had payroll during the year the rest five of them didn't have any payroll so it just tells you how many group summary certificates were saved how many were not saved because they had zero values so after that you can print them directly here well, if you want. If you've got a PDF writer, you can print it directly to the PDF writer and rename it whatever you want to. Now, then you go next. This is the verification report that will actually go to the ATO. So you click on the preview. It's a very good practice to actually keep a copy of the verification report. So you click the verification report. This is exactly what will go on the file to the ATO. What you can do is you can actually save it so you can actually go send to PDF and you can actually save it in the my file where in the folder where you want to save so it says payment summaries verification I save it now once I've saved it I'll close this you can print it directly if you want to next now this is the field where you can actually create an elect um, electronic file of your POIG withholding annual statement which you do need to send to the ATO by 14th of August 2012 what you do is you click on create EMPD UPE file it'll take you to your browser where you want to save it so make sure you're saving it in the right folder click on save do you want to print the magnetic media information form now on I'm not going to print it actually I'll just see if it gives me an option yep so what I'm going to do, I'll just save it as a PDF and I'll show you what this form is actually so that you know what it is. I'll just save it to the right folder. Okay. And I'll just open it while I've, after I've saved it. Okay, what this form is, this actually goes with the electronic media file that you'll send to the ATO so if you've got a CD or if you've written it on a CD or if you've put it on a USB this will have your contact details and your company details your ABN etc and over here you can take if you're sending a USB or if you're sending a CD and it's got the addresses in here to send those disks accordingly so if it's a USB you send it to the address here if it's a floppy or a CD you send it to the address this particular address now identifier I just wanted to stress on this so this is actually a six code identifier this could be ABC one two three whatever you want to make up so make sure you've got the right identifier put in here and the same particular identifier on your disk or your USB just in case if the things do get shuffled they can actually link the two particular they can link your form with your actual report so that's the only uh, identifier and if you don't if you're not able to print it out of my app don't worry you can get a blank form from the ATO website anyway so once you've printed the magnetic media form you go next and 
the backup is uh, you need to do a backup before you create a new finance a new payroll year so then you do a backup and that's it you're pretty much done with your group certificate now you can print group certificates as many number of times as you want before you've actually rolled over the final payroll year so as long as you're still in the current payroll year and you haven't gone into the new payroll year you can go and print payment summaries as many times as you want so i hope this has given a bit of an understanding a bit idea of how to do the payment summaries electronically rather than filling out the manual forms and this is going to save a lot of time if you've got 10 15 20 employees even five employees two employees you'll save a lot of time because it's all electronic and you've got a copy saved on your actual computer rather than filling the forms and then for sending them out so good luck with the new financial year and if you guys have any issues feel free to get in touch on numbers one three hundred double six four seven nine six hs bookkeeping service thank you